This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. And now, without any further ado, story time from R.C. Sproul on Wretched Radio. I was in conversation with Carl Sagan, and I asked him a simple question. It was a simple question. I, I did said, that all the time. If all of matter and energy were compressed into this infinitesimal point of singularity that was in a state of organization and inertia for eternity, then why was it that on one Thursday afternoon at 3 Mm o'clock, the whole thing blew up and exploded into our present universe? Where did time come from? The most fundamental definition of inertia is bodies that are at rest tend to remain at rest unless they're acted on by an outside force. What's the outside force here? And his simple and profound answer was, I don't want to go there. (laughs) Don't blame him. I said, how can you be a scientist and stop because you want to stop and instead of pushing for truth? Pick me! Pick me, Dr. Sproul! Romans 1. They need a mechanism to justify their suppression of what is obvious so that they can live unrighteously. That is why evolution endures. It it, it allows the, the educated scientist who looks at things under a microscope and goes, wow, that is complex, ordered, and intelligent. Nah, there is no God. Furthermore... The evolutionary worldview, it is so bleak. No wonder why. Uh, this is from tele- the Telegraph. Favorite Bible passage of the, this is another, guess what? Guess what's the favorite Bible passage? That's right. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. It tops the charts in nine other countries besides Great Britain, Canada, Australia, et cetera, et cetera. Why? People are looking for they, they, hope is important. I think it's built into our DNA, built into our DNA. We we need hope. We 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 need something to look forward to. The evolutionary atheistic worldview. Wow, no wonder why so many people are bummed out. We start with nothing, and we end with nothing, and we say all there is is this time now between those two poles of nothing and nothing. And I've been screaming for decades that if we start with nothing and if we end with nothing, we are nothing. Albert Camus understood that when he said, in light of this worldview, which is really the worldview of nihilism, the only philosophical question left to ask is the question of suicide. (laughs) Is it possible that's one of the reasons that we are seeing the high rates of suicide? Uh, nihilism, nihilism, it, it's, it's just bleak. It's so hopeless. Let's try to remember that quote together. If we started with nothing, end with nothing, then we are nothing. And that is not the way that we were built to think. And so when people are indoctrinated with that thought, it ultimately leads them to what is the point? It is not a far leap to take one's own life. When you believe that we are nothing, that there is no point, there is no goal, there is nothing more transcendent, this is it. Even basic thinkers, unlike Solomon, will come to his conclusion. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. What is the point? It is a bleak worldview. The Christian worldview, on the other hand. We see that Jesus not only fills everything, Jesus not only owns everything, Jesus not only rules over everything, But everything that is there is for him. Why is there something rather than nothing? Why does this world exist? Why do you exist? 
for Jesus. That's our raison d'etre. That's our reason for being. That's why anything is. It's for Him. That He may be all in all and share His glory with no man. That is transcendent. That is bigger and that is better. If King Jesus were a tyrant ruler, that would not be good news. But He is good and he is kind and he is the best thing in the universe and all of this exists for him and that includes you and me as a side note need to be careful all things exist for jesus the whole creation is for him to point toward his redemptive work that god might be glorified for his loving kindness ephesians 2 7 the purpose statement of the universe that he would be glorified for his loving kindness demonstrated and revealed in his son Jesus Christ all of creation is for God God is in creation God is organizing it he gives it life but God is not creation in biblical categories God was in the storm but God was not the storm God was in the wind but God was not the wind God is in the sun, which cannot shine for a second apart from the power of God, but God is not the sun. We must never, ever obliterate the distinction between the Creator and the creature, yet nothing can exist unless it subsists in the very being of God and is filled by God and touching His divine nature. There is no particle in this universe in which Jesus is not present. He fills it all. Everything. When the world tries to live without recognizing that and understanding it, no wonder why it's all futile, no wonder why it's all empty, no wonder why it's all vanity, and no wonder why so many people are killing themselves. We have a message of hope. I, 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 I am thoroughly persuaded that this suicide epidemic that we are seeing is an opportunity for Christians to shine a light on Jesus Christ and say, there is hope for you. There is a reason for your existence. Okay, Ephesians um, Ephesians 2. I think it's also in Ephesians 4. It's, it's all over, actually. It's also in Titus 1, where we are told why we are here, to do works. What kind of works? For him. That is why we exist. Here it is, Ephesians 2, uh, 1 through 10. Let's start at verse 7. No, verse 6. That No, that's go back to 5. That's a good one too. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Purpose statement for the universe, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Then you get Ephesians 8 and 9, by grace you're saved through faith, not of works. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That is good news. You got a job, and your boss is God himself. You know, we, we, we tend to measure jobs. How good is a job based on how much satisfaction or how much do I enjoy doing it? Is there any job that is better than working for the king? I don't think so. And that is our message. Now, that's not the gospel, of course, but that is our message. There is a reason for your existence. There is a reason for hope. And and I believe it's also in Titus 1 that that you are saved unto good deeds. It's the same word, word, works. that's That's what we're saved for. Those who profess to know God 
but in works they deny him being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. We get to do every good work as Christians. The world is desperate. It's nihilistic. It is looking for hope, and we have got it. Christ is the alpha of creation. Christ is the omega of creation. And the only reason you exist and that I exist is for Him. For to live is Christ. To die is gain, but we're not dead yet. We have works to be done, and here's a work I do believe the Lord would call you to, to proclaim the excellency of his name to a world that is hopeless, bleak, dying, depressed, and suicidal, that they might know about him and have life. Is there any better work than that? Until tomorrow, go serve your king. 